recording? Okay, so today we're going to talk about uh, translation and terminology and how the terms are actually made in English and uh, if the, how, how they are actually put together. Of course, I'm going to actually use some medical words, but still yeah, the language itself is full of terminology which is based on um, uh, 300 or 400 uh, roots that are in Latin and Greek. And these 300 or 400 are available online. Uh, you can look at them and learn them, these uh, short terms. I'll start with the structure of the term. Oops, sorry, it's okay, I'll go back. Okay, I will start with the structure of the term. All medical words, or most of the medical words, consist of uh, two or more terms, okay, for uh, one single word medical word. So what we need to do, we need to divide the word, the medical word, whether it's medical or scientific word, it doesn't have to be medical, but in this case it's medical. So we define the word into items. It can be two items, three items, four items, and so on. Then analyze the terms that are, that must, that are part of the word, and then define the word as a whole. Here's an example. For example, the word pericarditis. This word, which is a medical word, consists of some terms in it. The first part of the term is peri, which means around. Then you have the word card, which is always means uh, heart. And of course, you will not talk about the word card as in uh, birthday card and uh, postcard and so on. This is card from the Latin and Greek uh, list of words or terms. And then we've got the itis, which, is, which means inflammation, which is usually a suffix which comes at the end of the word. So it's around, heart, and inflammation. When you put them together, it can become inflammation around the heart. The word peri means around. And the word card, for, for example, cardiology, Cardiology means the science of, uh, of the heart. Here's another example about oncology, which is another expression. Oncology, of course, means al-amrat. Al-amrat al-awram. Onc means waram, in Arabic. Or onco means tumor or mass, which is waram. And logi means the science of. So together it becomes study or science of tumors, which means el el So this is really how you break it down, this term, this, this medical word. This is about the structure. So the structure when you are seeing a word, a term, uh, or a, a very scientific word, you have to break it down into terms and check what each term means, put them together, and becomes, you will understand what that word means, what that term means. Terms themselves, if we move on to terms, how, do the, how are they built? They can be, consist, they can consist of two terms like one plus another term, plus another term, plus another term, all of these terms together, and they will become a word in the medical field. For example, if you talk about the specialists in nose and throat and ear, or ENT as they call them in the uh, English language, in normal uh, spoken English language, sometimes written, but it's not Latin, it's not the one that experts uh, like medical uh, team or nurses and doctors use. Uh, the term for nose, for example, is rhino, and then you have larynx for the throat, and it got the auto for the ear. So if you put auto with rhino and larynx together, and then put ist at the end, it becomes a specialized person in nose, ear, and throat. Here is uh, so that means it's four terms. Here, here is another example of how the medical word is, is done by 
dividing it into five different categories or classifying it into five different categories. These categories of terms are first prefixes and it's one F, not two Fs. Prefix. The prefix is it means the beginning of the word. Usually there is a dash after it, as in the case of this word, pre, pre means before, and post means after. So if you if you say the word postnatal, okay, the word natal, uh, natal means birth. So postnatal means after birth, and prenatal, as in the case of prenatal classes, prenatal classes means classes that couples attend to learn about pregnancy. So pre means before and post means after. Again, another example would be when you say about a clock, AM and PM. AM means ante, ante, A-N-T-E, and, uh, and then post means after. So ante, meridian, meridian means uh, midday. Ante, meridian means before midday. For example, if you say it's 10 o'clock in the morning, when you say 10 a.m., okay, that means 10 ante meridian, 10 before noon. And then you've got 10 p.m. or 9 p.m., let's say, that means post meridian. Post meridian means after the noon, that is after uh, the midday. So that's what post and ante, ante with an E, not with an I, because with an I, it means against. But ante with an E, it means before. Which is similar to this one in terms of being a prefix. So prefixes usually come at the beginning of the word. Like in the case of we have already the word peri, which is also a prefix. But here we are analyzing the terms or classifying the terms, what are they? There are prefixes, suffixes, and roots. There are three. We finish with prefixes, and here's a, and they are designed at the beginning of the word, but the suffixes are at the end of the word. Suffix is ending of a word. Here's um, some examples, like for example, the itis uh, suffix, which we have just seen, carditis. Carditis means iltihab al qalb. So itis at the end of the word means iltihab. Any, anywhere you see it, like bronchitis. Bronco means uh, they, to do with uh, with uh, breathing the pipes in the uh, body, human body. And bronchitis means it is the inflammation of the pipes, the wind pipes in the human body. Bronco means يعني التهاب القصبات bronchitis. So that's التهاب and bronco is the قصبات. The third form, so we finished the first one which is uh, prefixes, number two is suffixes as in itis and we move on to the root of the uh, which is another form or another type of term. The root usually is actually the main part of the term, uh, of the word, of a medical word. Here, it is the foundation base of a word, as in the co uh, case of hept, hepat, hepat. Hepat means, is to do with the uh, liver, cavity. And gaster means to do with the uh, stomach, or something to do with the digestive system, and the or the so any, any word that you see that has got hibat, it means kabit, yani shib, ta'alab al kabit. And any word that has got gas, gaster, that means it's connected to something relating to the stomach. Okay, so when you want to combine them, the root with some other word, like suffixes or other term, then you have to put the word o, that is number four, combining vowel and vowel usually go to add to a root, as in ex, example, gastro, gastro, for example, say gastro, uh, gastro, and then another term, then that means something to do with the digestive system, digestive system, 
yeah, you just put it in a hug. Like in this case, you've got, for example, this one here, combination, gastrohepatitis. We know itis means a tiha. We know hepat means liver. So, and we know gaster means hadam. So it's actually, we know now what that means. It means that tihab, fi jihaz al-hadmi wal kabit. And the root can be a suffix at the end with a consonant. Here we go, as in the case of cardio migali. Cardio migali means, migali means the rakhu, or intifaq. Cardio migali means intifaq or rakhu al qalb. Halat tabakhu. Another example here is the, uh, with the root, with the vowel, is hipt. As you can see, that the hipt, you can put O at the end of it. Here we didn't add to it because it's the last word, and that's why we didn't put off, because O means and or of. Okay? That's why you've got O here, it means gastro and hipt, means hadun wa ikabit. So hipt or hip toe, it, it means a liver. It means to do with the liver. And gastro, it means to the digestive system. Moving on to uh, more of these examples, okay, with a dash, of course, this dash means that I'm showing you where the the vowel is to connect the two words together. Of course, it, you will not see that in, uh, in the actual term, but here is just to explain it if they put a slash like that. Here are a few examples like hyperleukocytosis. This is how to explain this one. Look at this. Hyper is the prefix, means it's at the beginning of the word, it means excessive. You know, we have, we have hyper children, when you say they are hyper. Hyper means they are jumping all the time, they're running they all the time, got lots of energy. Over, over, it's too much energy when you say hyper. And hyper is used in any uh, field, scientific field, not necessarily medical, of course. Luco is to do with the word white, as in the case of bloods in the, in the blood, there's white cells and so on. But the word luku itself means white only. And then sit means cell. So when you have luku sit, it means the cell that is white. And then osis means the condition. So it's the condition of excessive white cells. Of course, it means the blood cells. So that condition is called condition of excessive white cell, white blood cells, and that is leukocytes. Leukocytes is to do, the leukocytes means, the word leuco means white, and the word site means cell. So put them together, this will be white cells, white blood cells on their own. But when you put osis at the end, it becomes condition of. So that's excessive, white cell, white blood cells, and we are talking about the condition of it, the word osis. Okay, this is another example, the last one, where perhaps, and then we can move to some scientific examples. Or maybe we can move straight away to some, some examples in, the, in this one here. Let me just show you some, uh, some expressions that are used in this, uh, in this one.